All right, it is 12.02, we're gonna get going. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, our Utah League of Cities and Towns uh, series of newly elected crash courses. Um, as I'm sure all of you know at this point, uh, ULCT represents 255 cities, towns, metro townships uh, with strong unified voice uh, in this state. Uh, we operate on the principles of respect, collaboration, outcome, and we work with state leaders to respect the role of our local governments as well as respect their role um, as legislators and, and try to collaborate to get the positive outcomes uh, for all of our constituents. Um, this is the part of our series where we provide training and information um, about all kinds of municipal issues. Today, uh, we are focusing on our advocacy efforts and talking about how the, the legislature itself works. So we're gonna have another training on Thursday where we talk uh, more specifically about uh, what the league does, um, some of the offerings we have, how we operate on the, on the Hill, and more specifically about some of the subjects that we cover. Um, but today uh, we're gonna talk about how the legislature works. How does the bill become a law here in Utah? So um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Justin Lee. I am a deputy director here at uh, the League, uh, and I oversee the advocacy and legislative efforts. Um, and um, oh, just look in the chat, we've got an, an AI keeping track of notes, so you could watch that. If you have questions uh, or comments, uh, feel free to put those in the Q&A section uh, in Zoom, and we'll, we'll respond to those questions uh, throughout the, the uh, presentation today. So what we're going to do is uh, just to give you kind of a roadmap, we're going to talk about um, how a bill becomes a law in Utah. Um, it's a little bit different than how a bill becomes a law um, at the federal level um, and, and in other states, um, but walk you through the process there. Uh, talk about how some different committees work. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can track bills uh, on the legislature's website. Uh, talk about how money gets appropriated and answer questions that go along with all of that. So with that, I'm going to uh, share my screen. And we're going to look at the legislature's website. Make sure that works. All right, I think that's working. So uh, what you're seeing here, um, this is le.utah.gov. This is the Utah State Legislature's website. And I will say that the State Legislature's website is actually a pretty good resource uh, for all kinds of things. Um, and, and one of those is for um, learning about how bills become a law and all that. So we're going to go over here. I'm not just going to show you uh, the information. I'm going to show you how you can find the information. Um, this is one of those. If you give a man a fish, uh, he eats for a day. And if you teach a man to fish, he'll never stop telling you fish stories. Um, so if you click up here on research and legal and go to legislative information, a whole bunch of information is going to pop up. But we're going to go over here to legislative guide. And at the very top of the legislative guide is this link here that is how a bill becomes a law. And I'm going to increase that a little bit. So how a bill becomes a law in the Utah State Legislature. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll learn something new from this. But number one, um, where do legislative ideas come from? They come from they come from you. They come from lobbyists. They come from constituents. Or a legislator may have a personal experience, which forces them or, or draws them into creating a new law. So what they do is they open a bill file. So legislators go in, they open up uh, what's called a bill file, and they have a couple of options when they open that bill file up. It can be a protected bill file. Um, so when the legislator is the only one that can see it, um, when a bill file is protected, um, it cannot be shared with anybody unless the legislator themselves uh, give permission for that to be shared um, until eventually it does get made public. Um, and a legislator can also prioritize um, their bill file. So each legislator gets three priority bills, which means in, in, the, in the drafting, um, those bills will get prioritized, they get drafted before other bills. Um, and they can decide whether is it a bill or a resolution. Uh, a bill ultimately becomes a law. A resolution is, is just a nice statement that the, the legislature may want to make. Uh, we're mostly going to focus on, on the bills. So the Office of Legislative Research and General Counsel, OL, OLRGC, um, or LRGC, if you want to make it even shorter, um, has a bunch of drafting attorneys, has a bunch of policy analysts, and the drafting attorneys um, at LRGC are the ones who are drafting and writing up those bills. Um, so the bill, the bill drafting attorney will reach out to the legislator. Um, they'll talk about what they want to put in the bill file. And then those drafting attorneys will get busy drafting. 
Um, so you hear us talk about working with drafting attorneys a lot um, when we're working through different areas, working through different issues. Um, a lot of times we're working directly with the drafting attorneys to make sure that that language um, is correct and is what we agree on um, or, or talk through with various legislators. So the bill drafting rules are the first bills that get requested or the first ones that get drafted um, with a couple of, of uh, caveats to that. Um, if an interim committee opens up a bill file, that can be prioritized. Um, if a legislator um, prioritizes one of their bills as their three priority bills, those get drafted before other uh, regular bills that are not prioritized. But for the most part, bills just get drafted um, on a first come, first serve basis. Um, right now, we know there are um, over 1,500 bill files that have been open, requests for bill files to be drafted, um, and legislative attorneys are working um, virtually round the clock uh, to get those drafted and ready for the legislative session. Once the bill gets drafted, it gets sent to the attorney, uh, by the attorney, excuse me, to the legislator uh, for approval and review. Um, a lot of times um, as league staff, when we're working closely with the legislator on a different bill, uh, we may see a draft of that bill uh, before it goes public and we may sign off on it and say, yes, this is what we discussed. This is what we thought we were going to see. Um, so when it goes public, it is, uh, it is what we're expecting. And then the bill is, is numbered. Um, so once the bill gets approved, it's, it's approved to go out there, then it'll get a number. So HB 45 or SB 112, uh, bills just get numbered in the order that they, they come through. Um, Copies are sent to the legislature, and then um, probably most important for us, uh, posted on the legislature's website, and those are public for everybody to see once that is drafted. Um, so uh, we're going to go through the parts of a bill. So I'll show you how to find the bills in a minute, um, but for now, we'll show you the different pieces of the bill if you open up one of the bill files. Um, so up here, it will tell you who the drafting attorney is uh, up at the top left of the bill. Um, you may not care a whole lot about that, but um, I tell you, as we work with drafting, drafting attorneys over the years, um, and we see a name up there, um, sometimes it tells us what's going on or it just tells us who we need to reach out to um, if, if we have some questions about the drafting. Um, the top here has the short title of the bill, um, and really that's just what we call the bill title. Um, so this one, Social Worker Examination Amendments. Um, you can see who the sponsors are. The chief sponsor is the person who requested the bill. Um, the Senate sponsor in this case, because it is a House bill, um, would be what's called the floor sponsor. And we'll talk about what that looks like in a minute. Um, but you look that up, you can see who the sponsor is. Then you see what the bill number is. Um, so this part is, is kind of a weird part of legislative, but each bill must be read uh, three different times before it can be passed. Um, it's It's... The function in reality, what that means is uh, a little bit different in each house. So the first reading is when a bill is introduced in the House or Senate by the number and the short title. So if you're watching floor time um, for the Senate or the House uh, at the start of the meeting and sometimes in the middle of the meeting, they'll they'll run through a whole list of bills that are getting introduced that day, and they'll say, you know, whatever HB seventy five, um, Monkey and Park amendments. Um, I don't think there's one of those this year, but um, they'll say what the bill title is, they'll say what the number is, and then all of those will get referred in both houses, both the House and the Senate, to the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee then reviews those bills and assigns those out to all of the various committees uh, to get their, their public hearing and to be considered by those committees. So that's your, your first reading when it is actually read into the Senate or the House. And just let me say right now, if all of this goes over your head, if you don't remember all of it, that's OK. Um, that's that's why you've got league staff is because we're up there all day watching this stuff. We just want to make sure you have a little bit of an overview um, for for what works uh, or how this all works. Um, so next, they get assigned to a standing committee. So this could be like the Transportation Committee or the Political Subdivisions Committee, the Government Operations Committee, um, Health and Human Services Committee. But they get assigned to a committee, and then the committee chair uh, gets to decide when that gets put on the agenda. Um, sometimes they'll sit on a bill for a little while if there's work that needs to be done. Other times they'll put it on the agenda immediately. But each bill needs to go to uh, a standing committee uh, to get the hearing and be voted on before it can move back to the full body. So in the committee, 
the sponsor will go before the committee, they'll present their bill. Um, and then that is the chance, if you want to speak to a bill, uh, the committee is your opportunity uh, to give public testimony um, for or against a bill, or if there's just a comment you want to make a, about a bill, that happens in committee. Um, there's not any public testimony that takes place uh, when they're on either the House or the Senate floor. And then the standing at a committee, it says here, may take action on a bill, but usually takes action on a bill. Um, and we'll look at the different actions they can take. So in a committee, they can amend a bill um, or substitute a bill. Amending and substituting are virtually the same thing. Um, the difference is amendments um, are smaller in nature. Um, I think it's 15 words or less that you can do as an amendment. A substitute is a, basically it's a larger amendment where you're substituting the language of the bill uh, with new language. And that's gonna be something uh, larger than 15 words. It's something that's be a little bit more substantive. Um, the, the staff uh, for the legislature generally likes to have the substitutions and the amendments prepared in advance. Uh, so you oftentimes see those on the website uh, before you get into the committee, but there is an opportunity if they would like to make um, an amendment on the fly, they can do that in committee as well. Um, a committee can decide to hold the bill um, if, they, if they decide they need to maybe work on it, or that's also just a procedural way they can uh, get rid of a bill without taking a, taking a vote on it. Um, they can table a bill, which does not happen very often, um, but basically it means the committee still sits on the bill and they can take action on it next time. Tabling doesn't happen a whole lot though. Or the most likely scenario in a committee is they, they either pass the bill out uh, or vote the bill down. So when they, they just take a vote on the bill. Um, to pass out, it's got to have a majority of those um, in attendance. So if it's a six person committee um, and three people are there, they just got to have uh, two people to vote that out. Um, but they cannot start the committee unless they have the quorum. So that goes to the committee. That's where a lot of the action takes place, where league staff or, or we may ask you as a city, city council member or a mayor to come up and testify on a bill. Um, that's going to happen in that committee uh, hearing. So then this is where it gets a little different between the two houses. But the basic thing to remember is each house, uh, both the House and the Senate, vote on the bills on the floor um, before it either gets sent to the other house or it's up for final passage. So in the House, uh, what you'll see is they'll, they'll read the bill back in and it will put up on, uh, up on the board in the House, up on the reading calendars. And then the House will vote on the bill and with that vote, um, it's over, it moves on uh, over to the Senate. Um, or if it was a Senate bill, it, it, it's passed at that point. If it's um, in the Senate, you'll hear them vote on the floor two different times. Um, so the Senate, they'll put the bill on the board on the second reading calendar, and then they will take a vote on that bill to move it to the third reading calendar. Um, when it's on the third reading calendar, that's really when it's up for final passage um, and, and the vote on that. So there, the real important thing to remember is once it gets on the floor, the House is going to vote on it one time on the floor. The Senate is still going to vote on it two times uh, before it, it moves out of that body. Um, it, it may seem confusing. It's not that not that confusing when you actually watch it. They, they keep the calendars up to date, uh, which bills they're voting on. Um, so amendments and substitutes, we, we talked about this. So um, less than 15 words on the House floor, less than 10 words on the Senate floor. Um, if you'd like an amendment made to a bill, and this is a lot of what we do as league staff, um, is, is we, we run around talking to legislators and trying to get amendments made to bills, um, is we talk to the legislator and we say, hey, we would like to amend your bill. Um, you know, would you be open to, to doing that? Um, any legislator can propose an amendment or a substitution to an, another legislator's bill. So if, if somebody's running a bill um, and let's let's just say Senator Smith um, gets up and says, this is my bill, then Senator Jones can stand up and say, I would like to amend Senator Smith's bill uh, with the following changes. And then you'll get into a situation where either the, the bill sponsor, Senator Smith says, yes, that's a friendly amendment. We've talked about it. I'm fine with that going forward. Or the Senator will say, nope, I don't like that at all. This is not a friendly amendment. Um, I don't want my bill amended in that fashion. And they can have the debate on the House or Senate floor about that. Um, but you have chances to amend the bill in committee meetings and amend the bill on the floor. 
Um, until that is gone to the governor, uh, bills can still be amended. A substitute bill is going to look a whole lot like a regular bill, uh, just with up in the corner there, it will tell you uh, which substitute it is. So in this case, it's the first substitute. But you may say, see second substitute, third substitute, fourth substitute, um, and on and on, depending on how exciting that bill uh, that bill is. Uh, finally, a bill is up for final passage once it has passed uh, both houses. So in order to pass with the majority, you need 38 I votes in the House, 15 I votes in the Senate. And if you want it uh, to be a Utah constitution, you need a two thirds majority to pass. Um, also a two thirds majority will make a bill uh, referendum proof uh, so that um, nobody can refer that bill back to the public if you have a two thirds in both houses. Uh, let's talk about this. They've got to pass through both houses. Um, Don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this one, but just uh, just a couple of, um, I guess, vocabulary words for you. Um, if a bill gets amended, if a bill passes the Senate and goes to the House and the House amends the bill, it needs to go back to the Senate for them to concur with the amendments. So Senate passes a bill, sends it to the House. Um, they they figured out there's something they need to change with it. Or they wanted to fix something. Then the House can makes the amendment, sends it back to the Senate, and the sponsor says, yes, we want to concur with this. That was a change I liked. Or they could say, again, no, nope, this is not a change I liked. Uh, we do not want to concur in this amendment. And then they, they can go to a committee and hash out uh, what that should look like. So concurrence is just simply if it passed in one house and got amended in another house, um, it needs to go back. Finally, once it passes both houses, uh, it gets signed by the Speaker and the President, and then the bill is then uh, sent to what's called enrolling. It's where they double check it for amendments, make sure all mistakes have been fixed. Um, but once a bill is enrolled, the, the only other place it goes is to the governor's office. Uh, and then the governor either signs, um, vetoes a bill or lets a bill become law uh, without signing or vetoing it. Um, so governor has 20 days after adjournment to sign the bill, not sign a bill and it can still become the law or veto the bill. Um, at which point the, the legislature can, can decide if they want to go override that or not. Um, so we've run through a whole lot there. Are there any, any questions really quickly? Um, th th part of this that doesn't make sense is we're talking about the legislative process. We can pause for a minute before we uh, jump over to a couple of other things here. Stop sharing for just a minute. All right, good info. Keep going. All right, I'll take that. Um, again, if you have questions, throw them out anytime. Um, and again, don't, don't worry if none of this makes sense. Um, we're, we're here. That's, that's why you have league staff. We're here to watch all this, to keep track of all and make sure, um, make sure everything's going the, the, the way that we hope it does. Um, and if not to let you know what's going on, so we can have you reach out as well. Um, so I'm going to jump back to the legislature's website here. Um, and we're going to jump off of, uh, the bill tracking and talk about, or excuse me, how a bill becomes a law, and talk about a few other things uh, on the website. So one, we're just going to go back to, again, le.utah.gov is the homepage. Um, to show you a couple different things that, that you can find. Number one, um, they've got this calendar here right on the homepage. And if you click on any given day, so we can click on January 9th just for fun, it will show you what committees are meeting that day. So today there's a Senate Business and Labor Confirmation Committee uh, that is meeting. Uh, but we're going to jump to next week because that's when the legislature actually starts. And if we click on the 17th, it will show us that there's going to be a public appropriation subcommittee meeting at 8 a.m., that the Senate chamber is going to be meeting from 11 to 11.50, the House chamber is meeting from 11 to 12, and then it shows you other committees that are going to be taking place on that day. So if you're curious as to what is going on any given day at the legislature, um, the easy thing to do is simply click on the date and it will tell you all of the committees that are meeting on that day. Now, if you're really interested, say, in the House Economic Development and Workforce Services Committee, um, there's a couple of different links you can click here. 
One, if you click this uh, little paper over here, you can see the notice or agenda. Now, there's not going to be a notice or agenda up right now because we're a week out and uh, agendas aren't going to be posted until 24 hours before, but it tells you where that is meeting, the time that it's meeting, and the location or the date and time that it's meeting. Um, you can also view what the weekly schedule is going to look like if you want a little larger overview. Um, but right there on the web page, if you're looking for, for the calendar, um, you can see that all right there. Um, I'm going to scroll down and show you a couple other places you can look and see some important dates. So under here, you've got the 2024 general session. It tells you the dates when we're meeting, January 16th to March 4th. Um, and then you can see a whole lot of quick links here. And I'm going to walk you through a, a few of them. So first, um, if you want to click on the significant dates, um, now, this is this is a lot of information, um, so don't get overwhelmed by it, um, but I'm going to show you where we care about. So right here, Thursday, January 16th, highlighting this right there, um, first day of the annual general session. So this is this is where we're starting um, right here. You can then see um, some important dates and deadlines um, that are throughout this one. If you're curious as to, you know, for example, why on February 23rd, we're really about appropriations. It's because that's the last day for the appropriations committee to complete decisions about the budget. Um, 27th of February is the last day to consider a bill from your own house. So if you've got a house bill, February 27th, is the last day for that bill to pass the house. Um, same thing with Senate bill. And then our favorite day is Friday, March 1st, when the federal or the legislative session ends uh, 45 days after it begins. But then you can also see um, 21st of March is the last day for the governor to veto. Um, and then May 1st is the normal effective date for bills. So if you're if you're looking at just what are the important dates and deadlines um, that are procedural, you can take a look at this page. Now, I'll tell you, this is not a page I expect you need to spend a lot of time on. Um, but if you're if you're curious where we're pulling some of these dates off that, that we may bring up, this is one of the ones we're looking at. Lee. Um, okay, so a question is, how can a bill not signed by the governor become legislation? Um, so that's a good question. So the, the Constitution allows the governor to, to veto a bill, which means it, has, it, gets, it gets shot down, to sign a bill, or it allows him to not sign a bill and it can still become law. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but there may be um, a time when the governor doesn't want to veto a bill. Um, but for example, let's say the bill raises the governor's salary. Um, then the governor may not want to sign that uh, just for, you know, political reasons, just kind of for the optics of it. He, he may decide, I'm, I'm not going to sign this. It's just going to become law because it somehow helped my office. Or on the other hand, he may, he may not want to sign a bill um, because he disagrees with the bill, but he also knows that it passed by um, a, a majority in both houses. And so it's not going to. It's going to be overridden as a veto, and he may not. He may decide that is somewhere where he may not want to spend his political capital. Um, but the the law allows for him to not sign a bill, and it still becomes a law. That's it's part of the constitution. So that that is a good question. Oh, let's see, we've got one in the chat. Uh, can confirm the calendar is incredibly helpful, as you can stay on top of when and where you need to be. So, yep. And, Everything's on there on that website. Um, I would say this again, legislature's website is very useful. So let's talk about how you can track a bill and find out about uh, various bills that are out there. Um, so if you go to the search bar here, um, you can see things that I've searched recently, um, but I'll show you a couple different ways. If you know the bill title, you can just type in like HB 13 and it's gonna take you right to HB 13 infrastructure financing districts. Um, you can then click on the bill, and like we showed before, it'll tell you the title of the bill, it'll tell you the number of the bill, it will tell you who the sponsor of the bill is, um, and then I'll show you a couple more things that you can see when you're in this bill. So if you click up on the status, there's not going to be a whole lot up here right now, um, but this will tell you if it has gone through a committee, it will tell you what the votes were in the committee, um, you can go find out what has already happened uh, with this bill by looking at the status, whether it's in the House or whether it's in the Senate, um, if it's been to a, assigned to a committee or not. If you missed the hearing um, and you really want to hear what the debate was, you click up here on hearings and debates and it will take you to either the committee um, or to the, the floor debate and you can go back and listen to those. 
Um, for league staff, we go back and listen to a lot of these. If, if either we miss something or it's a couple years down the road and we want to remind ourselves what the debate was um, last time a bill passed, we'll go click on that uh, hearing our debate. Now, going back to the search bar, um, if I type in like SB 54, for example, you'll notice up here, it's got the 2024 general session as the default. But let's say I was looking for SB 54 from a few years ago because I remember that was the number. I could say, I want SB 54 from the 2021 general session, change it to that, and I could go back and, and see what that bill was back then. Um, so if you're looking for historical information, um, you just toggle up uh, that general session bar there. Um, but let's say you don't know what the bill file is. Um, all you know is it is a bill about airports and you really want to figure out what that bill was. You can really just go and type in airport. And what this is going to do, it's going to give you everything on this website about airports. But let's say you're really just concerned about bills about airports. You're going to go over here, click the bill button, and it will get rid of a few searches. Um, and it will also, again, default to the current session. So now you scroll through and you're like, oh, it was HB 56. That was the airport bill that I was concerned about. Um, I was able to find it. So if you don't know a bill number and you're not even quite sure who the sponsor is, you can go up here, type in a subject. Um, we'll pick another one. Let's just say you're curious about water bills. Um, you can type in water, type in 24, 2024 general session, and it will give you all of the various water bills that are out there this year. Um, as a way to, to help you find those. Um, if you don't find a bill and you're sure when it exists, you can always reach out to league staff. Uh, we'll, we'll help you find that. We're tracking bills. But putting a bill directly into uh, either the title, um, you can also search by sponsor. So let's say I remember Jim Dunnigan told me he was running a bill, but I don't remember exactly what it was. I can type in Dunnigan. I can click over here on the left side to bills. And it's going to tell me all the bills that Jim Dunnigan is running uh, this year. And so I, that's another way I can go find what those bills are. So the search bar is actually very useful, uh, very helpful, and, and fairly effective. But I'm going to show you a couple other ways that you can find bills. Oh, we've got someone in the chat. All right, we've got... Okay, so I use an AI tool, bar.google.com, to get a bill summary so I don't have to read the full bill. Yes, there are some there are some good um, AI tools that help you with that as well. So that's, that is a good tip. Um, up here under bills, there's a few different things that you can look at. Um, if you click on view bills, it's going to give you all the bills going back forever, but it will give you which session you're looking at. So if you just want to see all the bills that are in the 2024, 2024 general session, you could do that, um, but it's just going to lay them all out by numbers and give you a long list. So probably not the most efficient way, but if you want to scroll through everything that's open because you're someone like me and that's what you do, um, again, click on bills, click on, uh, click on view bills, and it'll just show you everything that's out there. Um, if you want to browse by session, this is another actual useful one. Um, and you're just looking at maybe what's, again, by a specific senator, by a specific representative. You can click, I want to see everything run by Senator Bluen, and it will pop up all of his bills there. Um, oh, let me go back. Um, if you want to look at an old bill, you can, again, scroll back through old bills. If you're just curious about a subject, let's say you just really want to know about animals, you can just click the subject and it will give you anything out there about animals right now. Um, so lots of different ways to find the bills. And then you can see here, there's a way to track a bill. Um, so I'll show you a couple of different ways. If you go to the tracking service, um, you have to log in and it will retain all the bills that you're tracking, um, you create an account. But when you click on these, that will automatically add those onto your bill tracker um, if you want to do this on the website. Now on Thursday, uh, when we're talking more about how the league operates, um, not just legislative processes in general, uh, we are going to show you our bill tracker. Um, we track all the things, obviously the bills, uh, bills that affect the league. We track 150, 200 plus bills um, every legislative session. So if you're also looking for the bills that just affect municipalities, 
you can go look at the league's bill tracker and, and don't necessarily have to do your own tracking. But if you want to, um, you know, this is the way to do it. You go click on the bills, click on that, and, and that will allow you uh, to track them. So again, before I jump off of, of bills, how to find bills, I'll just pause really quick and check in if there's any questions or, or comments about uh, about the bills. I know we're running through a lot of stuff, but I uh, want to make sure that we're showing you uh, all the useful tools here on the website and uh, and how the legislature works. All right. Um, what we're going to do then, I'm going to jump to um, I'm going to jump to a bill from last year. Uh, we're going to browse by session. We're going to go back to the 2023 general session, um, and we're just going to select all subjects. Um, and we're going to show you a little bit about um, fiscal notes. So every bill that goes uh, to, through the legislature has to have a fiscal uh, note attached to it. And so pick Workers' Compensation Act amendments. And if you look over here, you see fiscal note. Um, this one is easy because there's not a lot of costs on it. But when you look at a bill, um, it's going to look at a couple of things. It's going to say, what revenue would this bill, if passed, uh, bring into the state. So it tells you ongoing revenue. It tells you one time uh, costs that there may be out there. How much is the state going to have to spend on this for expenditures? And then gives you um, a, a net uh, all funds, revenues, minus expenditures, see what the cost would be there. And then here you'll see under local government, um, there will be a statement in there. This one, enactment of this legislation likely will not result in direct measurable costs for local governments. But if we run into legislation that does in fact have a cost to local government, there will be a note on here that says, passage of this bill could impact municipalities by requiring um, additional noticing, which could cost you know X amount of dollars per notice or per year, depending how the legislative analysts um, decide to do that. Okay, so in your experience, what are the best ways to affect a bill you're interested in or concerned about? I'm going to come back to that in just one minute. Um, that's a great question. Um, right after we we talk about the fiscal notes. So uh, this is where um, we get to put our input on on the fiscal notes. So what happens is is every bill um, before it it can be passed has to have a fiscal impact statement done. So we talked about the Office of Legislative Research and General Counsel. There's also the Legislative Fiscal Analyst's Office or LFA. Um, LFA's job is to do the budget for the state and also to go through all of these bills and see what the fiscal impact will be. So there may be times that that we work with uh, usually you know city managers city managers um, with your finance officers and we'll reach out about a bill and say, if this bill passes, how will that impact your local budgets? And then this is where that information will go. So if we're asking to talk about fiscal impacts and you're curious what the fiscal impact will be on a given bill, um, again, click on the bill text and then click over here on the fiscal note. And that will give you an idea of what this fiscal impact uh, will be on, on any given bill. Um, it's not anything that you necessarily need to worry about um, as, as something that you'll be working on too much um, if you're an elected official, but we may be reaching out for information on these. Um, the other thing that the league staff has done in the last couple of years is we've aggregated a lot of the fiscal impact. So one bill with a fiscal impact um, may not do too much to your budget. You may be able to absorb that. But if you have 20 bills that have a little bit of impact to your budget, that starts uh, having a big, big effect. And so one of the things that we do is track the aggregate impact of these bills um, and share that with both Senate and House leadership and with the governor's office. So they're aware of what that's doing um, on the aggregate. Um, so let me jump back to this question and we'll stop share for just a second. Um, so the question is, what is, uh, in your experience, what are the best ways to affect a bill you're interested in or concerned about? So there's a few different answers to, to this question. Um, the first one is uh, talk to your legislator. If there is a bill that you care about, um, if there's an issue that that you care about, uh, whether it's because it impacts your city or whether it, it just impacts you, it's something you care about. Um, talk to the, the legislator who is the sponsor. Um, believe it or not, they're, they're fairly accessible. Now, I'm not going to say they take everybody's call all the time, 
Um, but if you are an elected official and say, hey, I'm, you know, council member so-and-so, and this is a bill I care about, and here's how it's going to affect my city. One, you can reach out to the sponsor, but two, um, even though the sponsor is the one who sponsors the bill, obviously, um, every legislator up there is going to have a vote on it. Um, so I would reach out to your legislators, the one that represents your community, and tell them either the concerns you have with the bill, um, concerns you have with proposals, or if there's a bill that you love, this is the bill I love and this is why, and, and we hope you would support it. But have a dialogue um, and, and hopefully an ongoing dialogue with the legislators that represent your community. Um, and I would start that now. Um, if you want to talk to legislators, I would talk to them before you're just going to blow up their bill. Um, unfortunately, what we we see, um, and, and sometimes it's unavoidable, but the first time a legislator hears from um, one of their, their local officials is when the local officials, you know, text them or calls them and says, I hate your bill um, or I hate this bill. Please vote against it. Um, again, if, we, if that's what we have to do, if that's the first point of contact, it's better than no contact. But reaching out to your legislators and having that relationship established now is going to help when you need to make a harder call or send a harder text later. So um, that's one, have that have that contact, have that with your legislator, um, have those relationships established. Um, the second thing is if, if you want to come up to the Hill um, or you can do it virtually, this is a lot more accessible than it used to be, you can also testify about a bill in committee. Um, that's the place they take public testimony. Um, so you can come up to the Hill, um, they'll, they'll open it up for public testimony and you can get up and explain um, in, in one or two minutes, depending on how much time they allow, why you are for or against the bill and the issues you see with that. So there are opportunities for, for communication directly with legislators or to go in committee uh, and to talk about that. And then the third thing is outside of the legislative session is when a lot of these bills are getting drafted and discussed. So if there's an issue you care about, if there's something you want to see pushed, um, start talking to your legislator about an issue, you, a bill you would like to see pushed or a bill you would like to not see pushed or issues you would not see. And you can actually work on the drafting of legislation. Um, so it's three. Fourth one, work with us. Uh, work with the League of Cities and Towns. This is why we exist, um, is to, to help you uh, with the legislative issues that you care about. Um, again, we'll talk about this more on Thursday if you're coming, but uh, we take positions um, as a league through our legislative policy committee. Um, and then we work throughout the year, uh, working on legislation that's getting drafted, uh, trying to stop bad legislation, trying to promote good legislation. So if there are, there are issues that you care about, reach out to league staff and we'll see if we can plug you into a work group that's going on or getting you involved in the legislative policy committee, um, et cetera. So um, just to sum that up, so one, reach out to your legislators and talk to them. Um, whether it's the sponsor of the bill or the ones that represent your area. Two, you're always welcome to go to committees um, and talk to the legislators there, testify about bills. Uh, three, work with legislators during the interim if there's an issue you want to get passed. And then four, uh, talk to us, talk to your league staff. We are here to, to help you get bills passed, uh, to stop bills and to, to find, again, the collaboration and consensus that we're looking for on these legislative pieces. So that was a lot um, on those bills, and we're not done yet. We talked about appropriations um, a little bit. So every bill that has a fiscal impact um, goes through what is called the appropriations process. Um, I won't make you raise your hands because we're on this, but um, if you know what the appropriations process is, you can raise your hand um, at your desk and feel good. But it is separate than the, the bill process. Um, there is a bill that is ultimately passed at the end of the session with all of the state appropriations. But if you are looking for funding for a project in your community, um, if, if there's something that you care about getting funded, there's a separate appropriations process that, uh, that runs tandem uh, to the policy process that passes bill. And the way that, that works is very similar. Um, a legislator will put in a request for an appropriation um, and then that will go to an appropriations subcommittee to be vetted and prioritized. And then when those appropriations subcommittees have prioritized all of the funding requests that they have received, that will go to the executive appropriations committee uh, that is made up of House and Senate leadership for the final prioritization of what ultimately gets funded. Um, so if, if you're looking for a project to get funded, if you're looking for grants, if you're looking for a road to get built, uh, whatever it is in your community, that runs through the appropriations process. 
Um, now, I'm not spending a lot of time talking about it because as, as league staff, we don't spend a lot of time um, on appropriations uh, because a lot of those are, are things that have impact just your community. So if you're looking to, let's say, build a new police station, and you're looking for, for some funding from the state from that, um, that's something that affects your community. Um, and and there, are, there are lobbyists who work on those kind of things, but we generally do not go uh, lobby on behalf of individual communities for something that impacts just a community. Now, if there's an appropriation that impacts the entire state or all of the the cities and towns in the state, that may be a thing that we get involved in, but the appropriations process is not something that we work on as the League of Cities and Towns uh, very much. Um, we won't come to a legislative policy committee. Um, I, I won't say never, but very often say we'd like everyone to sign off on, on this appropriation request that we want to go after, again, because those usually are, are more localized um, and and less less global, which is, which is where we operate. So, if you have questions about specific appropriations, um, feel free to reach out uh, to us. We're happy to help guide you through the process, but um, that's not something that we spend a ton of time on um, as league staff. Um, so uh, with that, open it up to any other questions that you have, um, anything that we didn't cover about how a bill becomes a law in Utah, Utah or anything else about the legislative process, um, happy to open that up and, and take questions from anybody. And let me just say, there really is no dumb question um, on, on how this works. Um, that some of us who have been in the space for, you know, 15, 20 years um, are still figuring out some of the legislative processes here and there. So um, don't hesitate if there's a question you think everybody knows the answer to. I guarantee there are other people with the same question. All right, got a question there. Uh, how many bills actually get passed? Uh, with 1500 open, that is a lot. So that's a great question. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna share my screen again really quick. So we're gonna jump back to the legislature's website. So if you go to bills, um, you can click on a link here. I don't know if it'll let me. It really hates me right now. Um, there's a link for past bills right here. Um, so again, no bills passed this year, but let's look back at 2023. So in 2023, there were 575 bills passed. Um, that was a record. That was the most bills they've ever passed. Uh, the previous record was 574. Um, but if we look at a couple other years, let's just pick on, oh, let's pick on 2019, um, which was the previous year. Uh, 574 bills passed that year. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of four to 500 bills um, is pretty typical to get passed in a given year. Um, and, and I think that's an important point that there are going to be, you know, only a third of the bills that, that get drafted or introduced um, ultimately get passed, but um, still a sizable number of legislation that gets passed in, in only 45 days. Um, so what are the committees that generally will see the most municipal issues? Uh, another great question. Um, so there are a couple of committees that we, uh, we visit the most often. Uh, the Political Subdivisions Committee um, is one that we see a lot. Um, that's that's where a lot of our bills go through. That's where a lot of the land use and housing bills uh, go through. We also go to the Government Operations Committee uh, fairly often. Um, name is exactly what it, it indicates. A lot of government issues uh, run through government operations. Um, but truthfully, the it's almost shorter to list the bills that we, or the committees that we don't track a lot. We do not go to the Education Committee very often. Uh, that's not one that we track too much. Uh, there aren't a lot of bills in health and human services that we we watch, but um, government operations, political subdivisions, uh, the taxation uh, or revenue tax committee, revenue taxation, um, economic development committee, uh, the transportation committee, utilities, uh, natural resources. Um, those are all committees that we spend a lot of time in. So again, the list is probably shorter. We don't spend a lot of time in education, um, but we really do have someone um, a league staffer in virtually every other committee um, every day watching some kind of bill. All right, any other questions?
Well, if there are not, and I'm going to talk for a second, so if, if anyone wants to throw up a question, feel free to. Um, but again, on Thursday, we're going to have our next webinar where we talk a little bit more specifically about issues that we are going to be watching um, as the league and talking about some of the processes that we have uh, through Legislative Policy Committee and other things that we do to take positions on the bill. And we'll give a little bit more information about specifically if you want to be involved with us during the session, uh, what that looks like. Um, and then next week, if you haven't heard, we have what we call Local Officials Day uh, next Wednesday, where we invite the youth councils um, and other delegates up to the Capitol. Uh, so if you're coming uh, coming there and we don't know yet, please come say hi to us at Local Officials Day. Uh, we have the governor who's going to come join us for lunch and speak to um, the youth councils. And also we get about 75 percent of the legislators uh, to come down to our lunch. So that's a great opportunity uh, to talk to your uh, elected officials. Um, at, or talk as elected officials to your, your legislators. Um, but that's taking place next Wednesday up at the Capitol. Um, and, and we'll put more information about that. Uh, let's see, we're gonna, uh, got a couple more questions. Um, I assume the ULCT approaches legislators with bill ideas. Uh, so if I have an idea for a bill, is it more effective to take that idea to the ULCT or take that idea to my legislator? That That's a good question. Um, yes, we absolutely do. We work uh, directly with legislators on bills. Uh, throughout the interim and throughout the session. So um, I'll give you two answers there. One, um, there may be an issue that you think is is a pretty local issue. Uh, maybe it's just something that impacts uh, impacts your city or, or you may not think it's something global. And there's no problem with you reaching directly out to a legislator if there's something you want to work on. That being said, anytime you reach out to a legislator for a bill, we would love to be brought in um, on the loop, um, whether to give you support, uh, whether to find out what other cities think about that bill. So no problem if you want to work with the legislator directly, but I, I would ask that if you do that, uh, to bring it in and, and at least keep us in the loop on, on the discussions that you're having. Because um, either we'll find out really quickly that other cities um, agree with you and everybody wants to jump on board with that, or there may be differences of opinion. And it's always nice to kind of have, have internal fights uh, before we go external with the bill um, and, and put ourselves places. So yeah, please talk to legislators, but but if you don't want to talk to the legislator, um, again, that's why we exist. So yeah, you can also just talk to us and we'll 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 work with legislators um to to get issues through and, and to get things fixed. So that's a great question. Um let's see, I jumped in a couple minutes late. What is the actual language of the bill released for public view? Uh, it's not when a bill file is open. So that um that depends. When a legislator um opens a bill file, they can choose to have that bill. Uh, be made public or they can keep it protected um, until it goes public. So um, a, a lot of bills do get protected while they're getting drafted and while they're hashing through things and you won't see any information. But before the before the public hearing um, at the very latest or before that bill file gets numbered, um, then at that point it does have to go public. So if a legislator you know, wants to have, have a vote on it and it has to go public, but it is possible for a bill to be pr be protected um, until pretty close to a committee um, before that thing gets uh, numbered and made public. Um, but once a bill is numbered, it is public. So if a legislator wants a number on a bill, uh, then they have to make it public at that point. So to say that differently, it is not automatically public as soon as the bill file is open, um, but it will be public uh, once it gets numbered and obviously has to be public. Uh, before it gets um, voted on. Let's see, we had one more in the chat here. Uh, yep, tomorrow at, at noon, we're having um, a, a webinar on budgeting basics. This is part of our local administrative advisors program. Um, so if, you, if you're interested on that, um, on budgeting basics, uh, we'll have that at noon. Um, on Friday again, we have, or excuse me, on Thursday, we have the webinar talking about um, what we do is a league up on, on the Hill and talking a little bit more specifically about our offerings. So um, if you're interested in those and, and don't have the information, uh, feel free to reach out to league staff and we can we can get that information to you as well. And I'm going to leave it open for one more minute if there's uh, any other questions. Um, but if there aren't any other questions, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please uh, be, you know, be as engaged with us as you'd like to be during the legislative session. Um, but if nothing else, please be talking to your, your legislators as you have town halls, shoot them a text and introduce yourselves. Uh, the strength of the league really is our members. 
Um, and as much as we do up on the Hill, it's, it's the work that you do talking to your legislators that brings some of the biggest benefits to us. So um, look forward to working with all of you during the legislative session and, and throughout the year. And um, we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. Okay, no more questions. So thanks, everyone. Have a good day.